trust that whatever season you're in is on purpose and preparing you for the next season that's coming right around the corner. If you're not sure, slow down and listen. Regulate your nervous system. Pay attention to the signs, signals, and cues. Declutter your gutter and have the courage to say yes or no when the answer comes through, remembering that nothing is permanent. You can always change your mind. You can always decide later that wasn't for you. Hey, I'm Brooke Jean, therapist, recovering perfectionist, and struggling working mom on a mission to normalize normal. If you're an overwhelmed, high achieving, and secretly anxious mama, struggling to balance it all and on the brink of burnout, you are in the right place. Here is where we talk about hard things like balancing work and family life, mental health, and how to navigate life altering transitions. Nothing is too taboo here. In my conversations, I'll teach you how to let go of who you think you're supposed to be in order to create the life you've always wanted. Get ready to embrace your messy, shed the shoulds, and find freedom through a life unperfected. This is the Unperfected Pod. Welcome back to the Unperfected Pod, where we normalize normal and find freedom through a life unperfected. Hello, 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 mama. Welcome back. My name is Brooke Jean, and I am your host. And today, I am excited to share a little life lesson with you. One of the really cool things that I get to do inside of the Unperfected brand and my business is I get to work with companies. And in these companies, often I do leadership coaching, wellness coaching, culture consultation. A lot of times we end up doing a lot of family therapy with founders and owners and and C-suites and things like that. But currently, I have an amazing client, which is a big interior design firm that's here in Denver. They're a national company. Shout out to Trio Design. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and look at their beautiful, beautiful work. But anyways, every Thursday morning, I get to show up live for their entire company and do what we call a weekly wellness live because this company cares a lot about wellness and cares a lot about the development of the team. And I've been doing this work for two years now. And this morning, just before I'm recording this podcast at 8.30 this morning, I kicked off a new month of topics for the Weekly Wellness Lives. And I'm deciding to do these daily doses of inspiration every Thursday morning. And these daily doses of inspiration are just life lessons that have really altered the trajectory of my life, that have really affected me on a deep and personal level that I also see affect my clients, just the good message that I want to get out and share to the people. And I'm trusting that these messages are going to download and come to me in the right time. So I had already had the message for today, which I'm also going to share here in a minute on the podcast, but I don't even have next week's lined up because I just trust that in my stillness, in my meditation, in my rituals, the call and the answer is going to come and I will know what the people need to hear. And that is a play off what I'm going to teach you today as well. So let's get into it. This is a message that I wanted to share with you all on the podcast right now. And the reason that I want to share it on the podcast is because so many of you are feeling really stuck. You're feeling stuck in your life and stagnant. You're feeling stuck in your career and you don't know which way to go or stuck in your relationships or stuck in your health journey. And maybe where you are isn't where you thought you would be at this point in your life. Maybe where you are isn't bringing you the contentment, the ease, the joy, the purpose and the pleasure that you had hoped for and desired. And so what I want you to know is, number one, let's normalize that normal. How many of us, especially mom, middle-aged moms who are like doing the damn thing, right? We're raising the families. We're in marriages. We're maintaining households. We're, you know, we're doing what we thought we were supposed to do. And at the end of the day, are we really, truly happy? And so many 
answer no to that question. And then we can start to feel really stuck. And then we can start to tell ourselves lies, like it's never going to get better. There's not more for me. And this kind of perpetuates this hopelessness and helplessness, which can also lead us down a path of depression amongst many other mental health issues and conditions. So I want to normalize that experience of being in your midlife and being like, is this really all there is? And then feeling stuck and maybe even helpless and hopeless around it. And so my message today is with the intention to help you get unstuck. It is to empower you to know that you are never going to be exactly where you are right now in this very moment forever. So here's the message. You might want to get your journal out, honey, and write this baby down, okay? Because I want you to think about it. I want you to chew on it. I want you to meditate on it. I want you to journal about it. I want you to see what comes up after you really let this message in. And here's the message. You are only one decision away from a completely different life. Let me repeat that again. You are only one decision away from a completely different life. So whether that one decision is to quit drinking, to start running, to begin your healing process and get into therapy, to get back into the dating scene, to leave the relationship, to learn the new skill, to get the job, to start the business, to write the book, to begin, join a hiking club and start hiking, to finally start meditating. There's your little nudge from the universe. Start a meditation practice. You are one decision away from a completely different life. Because that one shift that you can make today is going to open doors for you and put you on a different trajectory, okay? So let me talk about how this concept has applied to my life throughout my years. The first biggie that comes to mind is deciding to have my son in college. You guys know that I have two kids. One is 20, one is five. They're 15 years apart because I went ahead and got pregnant and had a baby my senior year in college. That was not the family plan, honey, was it? But deciding to have a baby, saying yes to becoming a mother, completely changed the trajectory of my life. You see, when I was in college, I was going nowhere fast, honey. She was just partying hard. I didn't have a vision for my life. I didn't have a dream. I didn't have a goal. I don't even know if I had a major. I was on the 10-year plan. I was just partying hard and being quite reckless with my life, right? And getting pregnant with Camden and deciding to become a mother, I, number one, got sober. Number two, moved home to start to save money. And number three, got my shit together with my career. You know, I was like, well, mama's going to have to figure out what her major is, how she's going to make money, what career she's going to have, what's going to provide upward mobility and growth potential so I can provide forever and ever to this human that I'm bringing into the world. And getting pregnant then led me to going to the career fair. You better believe I hadn't been to the effing career fair until my Hail Mary moment in my senior year because I was pregnant. I knew the career fair was going on, but that was not something I was interested in. I was more interested in going up to Red Rocks and partying for the Grateful Dead show, okay? So the career fair wasn't on my agenda, honey, until I got pregnant and was like, mm, okay, so there's a career center, there's a career counselor, there's a career fair, there's this thing called an internship that could set me up to have a career that's lined up before I even graduate. I'm going to say yes to that. So I went to the career fair and I fell in love with the leaders in red and khaki. The target people were the coolest people at the career fair. And that led me to saying yes to an internship. And that led me saying yes to a 10-year career with Target, being a corporate leader, doing various HR positions, climbing that corporate ladder, learning a ton about business and leadership, people, right? And that career provided for me and my son and eventually my family 
for 10 years. Now, that was a atrociously difficult career, right? I worked my ass off. It wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. And anybody that's a recovering corporate baddie knows. But what I want to tell you is this. That 10 years set me up for the success that I have now. That 10 years taught me a lot. I met so many fabulous people. I met my freaking husband at Target that I'm with today. I met so many fabulous leaders that I'm still inspired by that now want to collaborate because they've left corporate and they want to launch their businesses. Like These people are still in my circle. And that's important to note because all of that, I believe, happened for a reason. I got pregnant for a reason that probably saved my life. Then I found this job for a reason that was going to set me up for the future that I didn't even know that I was going to have or was deserving of, okay? The next yes that I said to was when I was in that corporate career, I had done an HR position at the store level, I had done an HR training position at the group level, I had taken on and fixed a, a smaller store in Arvada, and now I was getting offered a more challenging super target in Aurora. And I said yes to this opportunity. And listen, this was one of those stores that was just really challenging to run. And a lot of people referred to it as career suicide, to be honest, because it's like, dude, nobody's coming out of this opportunity unscathed. But I said yes to it. Because at the time, I was really trying to promote and grow, and I was, you know, hiding my trauma under my achievements. So that's really cool. But anyways, right, things happen in our lives for a reason. So even though I was pretty unconscious when I was climbing that corporate ladder and taking on more and more and more, I still believe wholeheartedly that that happened for a reason. And I needed that experience for what was going to come next in my life. And so being at this Aurora Super Target, it's number one, grew me to a whole new level, right? I had to stretch and grow developmentally because it was a very challenging assignment. But number two, if I wouldn't have been in that store in Aurora, Colorado, I would not have been so personally affected by the Aurora Theater shootings. You see, that took place across the street from my store and I've shared this story on the podcast because it was such a pivotal transition in my life that my early morning, many and most actually, of my early morning logistics team was in the theater that night. And I got a call at 3 a.m. from my early morning logistics executive saying, Brooke, you need to get down to the store. We've had a mass shooting across the street. Many of our team was in there. Half of our team is unaccounted for. And guys, this was an atrocious community trauma, a collective trauma. We lost a team member in that. We had team members who were injured in that. We had a real healing and rebuilding process to go through. But it was that community crisis, that trauma that looked like kick-started my healing journey because that trauma triggered my trauma, even though they were unrelated. I had repressed trauma that I didn't know had happened. And that trauma opened the floodgates to my trauma, which then got me on the healing path, got me on a healing journey. And it also connected me to my higher purpose, my calling, right? And being in the rebuilding process after that tragedy, it became so clear to me that I was supposed to be a helping and healing professional not a retail manager. And so while that was such a hard thing, such a hard time, so tragic and traumatic, it was the universe's way of kicking my ass onto the right path, which was eventually making the really hard decision to leave that corporate career, to get right with myself, to get into therapy, to do yoga, to figure out who I was, to go back to school, get my master's in counseling psychology, and to launch a business that I launched seven years ago, which has now positioned me to be where I am today. So saying yes to that challenging assignment ended up putting me where I'm at today, Right? How could I have ever known that? How could I have ever guessed that? How could I have ever planned that, plotted that, strategized that? So I was that one decision away from a completely different life. Starting a meditation practice opened so many doors for me. So many doors of healing, connecting to myself, strengthening my intuition, 
completely getting back into my spiritual practices. And now that has opened up this interest in other self-care rituals. So now I'm just in a day full of self-care rituals. I've got my morning ritual. I've got my midday ritual. I've got my evening ritual. And these practices are what keep me sane in a fucked up world. These practices are what carry me through the darkness of my depression, the intensity of my anxiety. When I'm really struggling, these are the things that carry me through. So just saying yes to meditation and finally doing the damn thing and sticking with it long enough to get the benefit has served me in such magical and meaningful ways. I am a different person because I learned and began practicing meditation, right? Facing my demons, slaying my dragons, facing the self-sabotaging nonsense that I engage in because of my trauma, because of my depression, because life gets hard. Looking at that shit, right? My shadow parts, the parts of me that are really unattractive, unpleasant, that I'm most embarrassed about and ashamed of. Facing them dead in the eye, the overdrinking, the overeating, the overspending, the rage. What is that? Facing that, as scary as it has been, has unlocked a whole new level of potential for me because I don't have unconscious blocks holding me back. I don't have parts of me that I'm keeping hidden. I know of them. I face them. I work on them. Am I a perfect person? Fuck no. Do I still fall into those traps? Fuck yes. But I am a more awake, more conscious, more intentional, better person, better wife, better mother, more effective therapist, more effective leader because I face these dragons. I don't pretend they don't exist. So that yes to doing the deeper healing, that yes to looking at my shadow, that yes to facing the things that are going to hold me back unlocked a whole new level for me in my life. Okay, if I wouldn't have done that, I'd probably still be, I don't know, eating and drinking myself to death. Okay, so what are you one decision away from in order to create a completely different life? You are not stuck, my friends. You are one decision away. What could that be? And here's the thing. You know, everybody wants a protocol. Well, how do we navigate this? What, do, what can I do? And I first want to say it's not a series of steps you can take. A huge part of this, and it might not sound sexy, but it's the truth, is just waiting to find out. A huge part of this is just having trust that it's all happening already. It's all happening in divine order. It's all happening for a reason. A huge part of this work is believing that you are where you are right now for a good reason. Whether it is in a terrible relationship or struggling with your newborn or in a shitty job that you want to quit, it's happening for a reason. It's bridging you to what's next in your life. And I find that shit empowering. Because we are not stuck in that place forever, right? We're in a season. But what is that season strengthening you for, building you towards, setting you up for, right? The time with Target set me up for the time in my career right now, right? The shitty relationship set me up for the marriage that I have now. The becoming a young mother got me on the healthier path. Right? Everything leads to something. And we have to have some trust and some faith and belief of your own understanding that like this is happening for a reason. And that's not to spiritually bypass or psychologically bypass trauma. But I can even say this. My trauma is a massive part of who I am and why I'm good at what I do. My trauma and the depression that comes from it is why I'm so comfortable sitting in the depths of hell with people. Why their pain doesn't fucking scare me. Because I understand it. That makes me a better therapist. That makes me a better mom. Because I get it. Okay? This shit hasn't been easy. I get it. I see you're hard. And it's real. And it's valid. And also you are not stuck there. Believe me when I say that. And so part of 
you know, understanding that we are just one decision away from a completely different life is trusting that that decision will reveal itself. And it might already be revealing itself. You just don't want to listen. You don't want to answer the call because listening to the call of quitting drinking or starting running or quitting your cush corporate job isn't fun. It's not easy. It's not sexy. But it's the thing that you need to do. Often the hardest thing is the thing that's going to set us free. I know you've heard that. That's not my original thought, right? So facing the thing that you don't want to face is the thing that's going to set you free. Is it easy? No. Is it all pleasurable and fun and sexy? No. But it's the thing for you. And if you're not going to listen, if you're not going to pay attention, the universe's nudges are going to get louder and stronger. And eventually the floor is going to come out from underneath you. The universe is going to kick you right in the ass and kick you into what I call a midlife awakening. If you haven't already, go back to and listen to, I think it's episode five on midlife awakenings, which is all about what I'm talking about here. Midlife transitions where the universe kicks you in the ass and suddenly you lose that job, your partner leaves you, you have to move, you have to sell your house, you have a major loss in your life that rocks you to your core, whatever it is, a health condition, whatever it is. The universe has a really funny way of getting us where we need to go if we're going to ignore the calls. And so I find a little bit of comfort in knowing Yes, I'm going to do what I can to pay attention to the calls, which is the second phase of this that I'm going to share with you today. But I also know like I won't miss the right opportunity for me. I'll know when it's time to say goodbye to something or someone. I'll know when it's time to exit left. I'll know when it's time to give that thing up or walk away from that dream or step into that dream even more. I'll know. I might not know today, but I will know because the universe is always guiding me. My intuition already knows, right? So when looking at what is the one thing, what is the one decision that's going to completely change my life, you have to tap into your trust in yourself and something larger than you that it will present itself. You will know when it's time. Sometimes you just have to be patient and wait. But the second part of this work, which is a little bit more practical, just a little bit more tangible, it's still got a massive flavor of woo into it, but you got to make sure you're primed and ready for the call, which means you need to make sure you're awake, you're paying attention, you're attuning inward. You need to make sure you're getting still and asking yourself these really deep and juicy, hard questions like, why am I not happy? What would I be doing if time and money and energy were a non-variable? Where would I live if money weren't a thing? What habit is holding me back? What relationships are toxic in my life, right? Like you need to get still, get quiet, regulate your nervous system and ask these existential questions. And honey, be prepared for an answer that might not be popular or pretty, But prime yourself to hear the call. Prime yourself to receive the information from yourself or something higher power than yourself because it will come. But don't force it. Don't push it. Don't get all scarcity mindset on this, B. Don't get all controlling on this. It will come. But you'll be able to hear and receive and face the call When you do get still, when you do spend time being introspective and looking within, when you do meditate, when you do journal, when you do reflect, when you do go out into nature and ask these really hard questions, the answer is already there. Just we don't always want to hear that answer or we're afraid to take the action that we know we need to take because let's be honest, our brains don't like new stuff. Our brain doesn't like the unfamiliar territory. It likes the familiar and comfortable territory. So, so many of us stay stuck because we're too afraid to do what's unfamiliar and foreign. But that is where the juicy shit of life exists, in that growth, in that stretch, in that leap of faith. You will discover more about yourself than any class will ever teach you. Trust me on that. But it's scary. I'm here to normalize that. It's scary. 
And our brains are hardwired to protect us from that, to prevent us from making the leap of faith, from stepping into the unknown. Our brains will resist it. So the next step in this process, if we're calling it a process, it's a pretty loose one, is to do what I call declutter the gutter, which is you got to remove your negative beliefs around what's possible for you. You got to remove your negative thoughts that are keeping you scared and afraid to change and grow. You got to remove the narratives that are telling you that will never work out for you or that's not the right thing for you or safe for you. So all that garbage that's preventing you from stepping out and stepping into your highest purpose, power, and potential, you got to declutter that shit, honey, because it's going to cloud the messaging. It's going to have you take a step out and take a step back in. It's going to prevent you. It's going to block you. Okay? You know what else is part of that declutter or part of that clutter, rather, is other people's opinions, other people's judgments. Do you want to know how many people thought I was crazy because I was leaving Target? Everybody. Why would you leave a good job? Because it's a good job, but I'm ready for great. I'm ready for more. I'm ready for doing work that lights me the fuck up. I'm ready for doing work that energizes me, doesn't drain me. I'm ready to make a difference. I'm ready to turn my pain into purpose. Okay? So I want more. But do I have stories and narratives and thoughts and a nervous system that wants to prevent me from going after that? Absolutely. We all do. Welcome to being human. But you have a role to declutter that gutter, to not give a shit about what other people think, not give a shit about what other people are doing. Blaze your own path forward. Clear out your negative belief systems. Reprogram them with more positive ones. I've taught you how to do that on this podcast. Keep your negative thoughts in check. Don't believe what your brain is telling you. Get still and listen to your intuition. Listen to your body. Follow what lights you up. Follow your bliss. That's where the answers lie. So if we want to really prime ourselves to be able to receive this information around what is the one thing that I need to do or not do that's going to give me a completely different life, we've got to get still. We've got to allow. We've got to surrender to. We've got to declutter the gutter. And then the last piece of that is just understanding the concept of impermanence, which basically means nothing lasts forever. You're never going to be stuck in this season. If you say yes for the next thing and you don't like it, honey, you can fucking decide to do different. Or maybe this yes is going to open this door that then is going to open that door, right? Like I started out as a therapist and then I wanted to do coaching and now I'm doing therapy, coaching and consulting, which then also opened the door for podcasting and writing a book, which I also now do public speaking and corporate trainings and company trainings. And I've done a retreat like one yes isn't the forever yes either, my love. Okay? One yes opens you up for future yeses. We're never stuck. Nothing is forever. Not that job, not that relationship, not that state that you're in or that state of that job or that relationship. Nothing lasts forever. And so why do we take this shit so seriously? Can we be a bit more playful with it? We don't have to have it all figured out, but we do need to live consciously and with intention. We don't just let life happen to us. We trust that we're in the right place at the right time to get prepare us for what's next. We believe that things are happening for us. And then we take aligned action to help ourselves out. We say yes to the big scary thing. We hire that coach. We start our healing journey. We begin the running practice. Whatever it is, you guys, it can be personal. It can be professional. It can be spiritual. But hear me when I say this. You are one decision away from a completely different life. And if you say yes to that thing, where you will be in six months from now, hell, even a year from now, is in a different place and space. If you say no to that bullshit that's holding you back, you will be in a different place six months from now, one year from now. So what is the one decision that you are being called to make? 
What is it? I bet you already know you're just too afraid to take action and I want to normalize that, but I want to give you the kick in the ass to push you past your fear because fear is just lying to you. Fear is lying to you. You can go for that promotion. You can launch that business. You can get back into the dating world. You can have another baby or decide you don't ever want to have any freaking kids. You can start to run. You can learn Spanish. You can go on that retreat in Costa Rica and try ayahuasca. Okay? Whatever the fuck. You can. Your fear is telling you that you shouldn't. And that's based on your brain, your nervous system, and conditioning other people's opinions and judgments about what's okay and what's not okay. Guess what we're doing? We're no longer living in alignment with the old rules that tell us what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing and what a good girl is and what a good girl does. Because guess what? That's made us miserable, hasn't it? That's made us more anxious, more depressed than we've ever been. What we're now doing is we're now listening to ourselves and what we desire and we're allowing those desires to lead the way. We're paying attention to our bodies. We're healing our relationship with our bodies so our bodies can give us the indicator with the green light, go, or the red light, stop. We are believing in ourselves and that we are worthy of good shit. Whether that is your professional dream, your personal life, your relationship, the body you want to have, whatever. We believe that we're deserving of it and we show the hell up for ourselves and we take action every day that moves us toward that thing. And if we're feeling stuck, we trust that we will not be stuck forever. We start listening to the call. We start taking action. We believe that we are going to be in a different space because we will be. I mean, take stock in that right now. Where you're at today, I want you to compare it to where you were a year ago. Where were you a year ago? Can you not acknowledge the growth? Can you not see she? Can you not she where you have stretched yourself, tried something new, removed something from your life that's no longer serving you, been open to something different, learned something, read a book, listened to a podcast? Like every time you do those things, you're actually changing on a biopsychosocial and spiritual level. You are growing. You are not stuck, whether you even see that or not. But how we get further unstuck is by believing and trusting that we are here where we're at right now for good reason. It is preparing us for what's next and what's next is most certainly going to come. And then we prime our vessel to be able to receive that nudge from the universe or our intuition of what decision we need to make that will completely change the trajectory of our life. And so there isn't pressure for you to figure this all out, but this is motivation to start to pay attention to the signs and the calls and the nudges that are hitting you. And this is the inspiration that you deserve to walk through that door or to close the other one. And that by making the decision, whether it seems really big and scary or really small and trivial, it is an opening to what's next for you, right? So whether saying yes to having a baby or yes to that corporate career or leaving that corporate career or just something as small or seemingly small as starting a meditation practice, it's all an opening to something new, to something different. And what's possible for you, my love, is limitless because that meditation can lead to a journaling practice, which can lead to you reconnecting to your soul's desire to become an author or to become a yoga instructor or to start a business or to ask for a different role in your current company or to leave your marriage or to have more children or to move to Nebraska. I don't fucking know. Okay. One little thing opens multiple doors. There's a ripple effect is what I'm trying to say. And when I say one decision can completely change your life, it's the ripple effect of that one decision. And a lot of times we try to control that ripple effect and that's what gets us into trouble. Why not see that 
as something more fun and playful. Like, I'm going to say yes to this and I'm just going to see what happens. <laughs> I'm just going to see what the ripple effect is. Universe, surprise me. Show me how good it can get. Show me how ridiculous this life can be. I'm open for all of it. The hard, the good, the ugly, the transformative. It's all part of your journey on purpose. So if you're in pain and you're feeling stuck, my love, you will not be in this spot forever. Take a look back and see how far you've come for evidence that backs what the heck I'm saying right now. Trust that whatever season you're in is on purpose and preparing you for the next season that's coming right around the corner. And what is the one decision that you can make that is going to change your life. If you're not sure, slow down and listen. Regulate your nervous system. Pay attention to the signs, signals, and cues. Declutter your gutter and have the courage to say yes or no when the answer comes through, remembering that nothing is permanent. Nothing lasts forever. You can always change your mind. You can always decide later that wasn't for you. But that door opening is going to give you something, some nugget that you need for the next door that's opening. And guys, I believe this shit wholeheartedly because that's been my story. One thing has led to the other. One thing has prepared me for what's next. Has it always been wrapped in a pretty bow and looked like growth? No, sometimes it's looked like tearing me all the way down and having a rock bottom, the bottom coming out. Sometimes it looks like taking 10 steps backwards to take a thousand steps forward. Sometimes it looks like sitting in the yuck and just having patience and knowing that it won't last forever, but hanging on for dear life. But I always still get a gem, something buried within that experience that serves me in my journey of this messy thing called life. So that is my message for you today, my love. You are one decision away from a completely different life. And so what are you going to do with that? What is your one decision that you're going to make? I would love for you to come into my private Facebook group, Mommy's Mental Health Matters, and share your one decision. I love storytelling. Stories empower one another. Stories uplift one another. Stories relate and normalize experience. So I would love to hear either A, where that one decision has opened things up for you or changed your life or what one decision you're getting ready to make or are currently making. And we can rally around each other. We can share stories. We can support each other. Again, it's called Mommy's Mental Health Matters. It's my private Facebook group. I would love to continue this conversation there. But until next time, my loves, take care of yourselves and therefore each other. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Unperfected Pod. I hope this episode helped you feel a little less alone and a little more inspired to be you. If you like what we're doing here, I would so appreciate that you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you do, share the episode on Instagram and tag me, at Brooke Jean Unperfected, to enter to win a one-to-one -one laser coaching session. Also, feel free to join me in my private Facebook community, Mommy's Mental Health Matters, where we continue the conversation. Thanks again for being here and see you in next week's episode.